Welcome aboard the United States ship Buchanan, DDG-14. This Tartar guided missile destroyer's keel was laid in April 1959, launched in May of 1960, and was commissioned at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, Bremerton, Washington, on February 7, 1962. The USS Buchanan is the third destroyer of the United States fleet to carry this historic name. She is named in honor of Captain Franklin Buchanan, U.S. Navy, a fearless and brilliant naval commander during the Civil War. He was born in Maryland in 1800 and received his midshipman's warrant in 1815. During his career, he had many commands and he was the first superintendent of the Naval School, which formally opened in 1845 at Annapolis, Maryland. Franklin Buchanan, while commanding the Susquehanna, the flagship of Commodore Perry's East India Squadron, played an important part in the conferences that culminated in the signing of a treaty with Japan. He was promoted to captain in 1855. During the Civil War, he was promoted to admiral in the Confederate States Navy, and was captured in action on his flagship, the Tennessee, at Mobile Bay. He had a long and distinguished naval career, which ended in May of 1874. This ship proudly carries his name. It is the purpose of this presentation to describe to you the ship, her equipment, mission, and capabilities. Further, it will include a brief description of the basic operation of the integrated weapon system during a simulated tactical situation which involves the use of the Tartar missile. The mission of this class destroyer is to operate offensively with strike forces, anti-submarine hunter-killer groups, in support of amphibious assault operations, and as a screening unit for support forces and convoys. The designated tasks of the Tartar guided missile destroyer are First, to destroy aircraft at medium range, either alone or as a part of a coordinated air defense system. Second, to detect and destroy submarines, either alone or as a part of a coordinated anti-submarine warfare system. Third, to destroy ships or shore targets. And fourth, to provide light gunfire support for amphibious forces or troops ashore. She is 437 feet long, has a beam of 47 feet, and a draft of 22 feet. Her full load displacement is 4,500 tons. She normally carries a complement of 18 officers and 316 enlisted men, many of whom have received special training in the weapon system in factory schools prior to their assignment to DDG duty. Her engineering plant consists of four high-pressure boilers employing automatic combustion control. She is powered by two 35,000 shaft horsepower turbines, which give her a speed capability in excess of 30 knots. Her armament for defense against enemy air attack consists of the improved Tartar guided missile and two 5-inch 54 guns. The improved Tartar missile, Mark 15 Mod 1, is a rocket-propelled, supersonic, surface-to-air missile. This missile employs homing guidance with tail control to guide it to an intercept with a target. The missile carries a high-explosive warhead, which is detonated by a proximity fuse. Two 5-inch 54-caliber rapid-fire single guns located fore and aft, provide the ship with an additional air defense capability. These guns are capable of firing 40 rounds per minute at an effective range of approximately six miles and to a height of 35,000 feet. The ship's primary armament for destruction of enemy submarine forces consists of the ASROC anti-submarine rocket. This is a supersonic rocket propelled missile with either a torpedo or a depth charge payload. This ASROC gives the guided missile destroyer the capability of delivering a weapon against a submarine while remaining outside the range of the submarine's torpedoes. Two sets of three torpedo tubes on each side of the forward deckhouse 
serve as a backup of the ASROC and the DDG's anti-submarine warfare armament. The guided missile weapons control system consists of three main parts. A weapons direction system, two gun or missile fire control systems, and a launching system. The weapon direction system, Mark IV, is the point of entry of a target into the weapon system. This weapon direction system receives and displays early target information from any of three search radars. The AN-SPS-37, the AN-SPS-10, and the AN-SPS-39. Because of its superiority as a designation radar, the AN-SPS-39 is the primary source of target information. The weapon direction equipment consists of four-man consoles in CIC, or Combat Information Center. Two of these are identical target selection and tracking consoles. This is a view of CIC. The console that is not shown here is a target selection and tracking console which is located out of the range of the camera to the left. The other two are the Director Assignment Console and the Weapon Assignment Console. Data is displayed at the Target Selection Console where the targets are evaluated and assigned to the Target Tracking Console. Six manual rate-rated tracking channels which are shared by the Target Selection and Tracking Consoles provide the data displayed at the Director Assignment Console. Targets tracked by the two target designation transmitters are also displayed here as well as repeat back information from the fire control systems. In addition to the PPI presentation of slant range and bearing for each target under track, displays are provided which include the length of time the target may be engaged, altitude, and speed. The relative threat is evaluated and the order of engagement is decided. Directors, either gun or missile, are assigned. Target position and fire control data are displayed on the weapon assignment console. This is where the launcher is assigned to the appropriate fire control system and firing orders are generated. The second major part of the DDG's guided missile weapon control system is the fire control system. This class destroyer carries two identical fire control systems. The Mark 74 Mod Zero gun and missile fire control system consists of a Mark 118 Mod Zero computer and two Mark 73 Mod 1 directors mounting the ANSPG-51 radars. The primary function of this fire control system is to track and illuminate designated targets and to generate launcher and missile orders. The secondary functions are to feed back tactical information to the weapon direction system and to supply orders to the ship's 5-inch 54 battery. The final part of the DDG's guided missile weapon control system is the launching system. The Mark 11 guided missile launching system is used to load the missile magazine as a stand to hold the missile during checkout and as a missile launching device. Now that you have seen the basic components of the ship, we would like to take you through an example of the tactical use of the Tartar weapon system. Envision, if you will, the DDG on picket station. The ship, having been alerted to expect an enemy air attack, is steaming at general quarters. 
the ship's long-range air search radar scans the sky for air contact. This is Combat Information Center. Here, the air search operator has just detected an inbound, unidentified aircraft. He relays the range and bearing of this target to the long-range air plotter. The track of the unidentified aircraft is displayed on the long-range vertical air plot. The evaluator judges the contact as unfriendly. The target now passes within the detection range of the SPS-39 air search radar. This radar is the primary input to the weapon system as it provides information in the three coordinates of range, bearing, and elevation necessary to position a tracking radar. A bandit continues to close and is being plotted on the short range air plot. As it enters on this board, the bandit also comes within the detection range of the SPG-51 tracking and guidance radar. The evaluator informs the weapons liaison officer that the bandit has been designated a weapons target. The liaison officer passes this information to the weapons control officer by phone and directs the target selection and tracking console operator to assign a tracking channel to the target. Number two target selection and tracking console operator tracks the target by positioning his pantograph over the target echo of his repeater. The missile fire control directors are at ready air awaiting a target designation. The weapons officer orders the director assignment console operator to assign channel Charlie to fire control system 2. The missile fire control switchboard now automatically positions switches to send the information from channel Charlie to director number 2. The computer associated with system 2 begins to program the director in an automatic search about the designated bearing, range, and elevation. Director 2 slews to the designated position, searches for, and acquires the target. The radar console operator locks onto the target and begins tracking. In the charter launcher control station, the operators on the loader control panel and the launcher control panel have positioned their switches for automatic cycle. As the target approaches charter launch range, the weapons officer orders the launcher loaded. The launcher goes to the load position, the blast doors open, and the rammer chain extends into the magazine. As the rammer chain is retracted, the missiles are loaded on the launcher. Warm-up power is automatically applied to the missiles on the launcher arm as they reach the fully loaded position. On the bridge, the commanding officer orders right full rudder to unmask the missile battery. And the ship goes into a hard right turn. The target is approaching launch range of the target missile. The weapons assignment officer assigns the launcher to fire control system 2. The launcher is synchronized with the computer orders, and a firing rail is selected. Based upon the information that there are no friendly aircraft in the sector, the commanding officer gives the order, missiles free. The target continues to close. Target acquisition occurs and the missile heads on its path toward the target. The missile intercepts the target at maximum range and one more target destruction is credited to the Tartar missile system. 
I am sure that you recognize that this description of the detection, designation, launch, and intercept of the target was not in real time. That is, the actual time that it takes for these interrelated actions to occur is far less than the time it takes to describe them. Therefore, in order to show you clearly the chain of events leading to the target destruction, it was necessary to describe the actions in slow motion without following the sequence in real time. This completes our tour and description of the USS Buchanan. We are justifiably proud of the ship and have been happy to show you her equipment and to describe her capabilities. We hope you have enjoyed your visit. Thank you.